Let's move on, talk about one of my favorite subjects, space. We're gonna end with a strategy that's out of this world, literally. The UFO Space ETF is launching. Last month, comprised of 30 companies that derive a majority of their revenues from space-based operations. The man behind the ETF, Andrew Chanin, Pure Funds, joins us now. Andrew, tell us what's behind this, how does it, how does it work, and how's it been trading for you? So, uh, the Procure Space ETF is a, is a fund that I've been very interested in, in bringing out. And it's one that not only kind of captures what uh, people's imagination is, but it actually is investing in this very real industry that we've seen emerge quite dramatically over the last several decades. And right now, um, we're, we're looking at an industry that's comprised of satellite companies, launch equipment manufacturers, and it's something that both is very important on the commercial side, as well as on the government and national interest side. I asked you for some stats, because the space economy is growing, and it's, it's becoming more important here. Annual global spend, $384 billion. That's a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Commercial is 80% of that spend. Governmental is only 20%. That's remarkable to me, and this is, I, I think, obviously because of the efforts over uh, at, at Amazon, of course, uh, SpaceX uh, as well. Uh, who would have thought this would have been 80% commercial uh, six or seven years ago? So if you look at what is really driving the space industry right now, we're talking about some of these transformational technologies, things like 5G cloud computing, internet of things and connected devices. If you believe in those industries, you're saying there's going to be a massive increase of data. And these satellite companies are actually the backbone and the toll operators for this road that transfers data. That is an absolutely critical thing, point to make. So now you're making a connection between the, the internet of things, uh, 5G, cloud computing, and you're saying there's a connection between this and space because the way we get all this data out into the world is we're gonna send it up into space and use satellites. Satellites That's the connection. are absolutely critical for this and most people are overlooking that aspect of it. How, how important are things like NASA contracts to these firms or is this pretty much just independent of whatever the government really decides to do? I mean I'm surprised to see that 20% big G number too. And so, so that 20% that Bob mentioned it that includes NASA and other um, other agencies. So this 80% drive a huge push comes from broadband and um, you know, internet communications. There's also some industrial exposure but if you look at the way that the space um, the space index that the fund was actually built. It's 80% of these companies that are deriving a majority of their revenues from space-related right. systems and services. So you have a pretty high bar here, because I noticed they're mostly satellite companies that, you, that, that you're looking at here. You know, we're looking at Immerstat, Global Star, Maxar Technology, Intelsat. These are satellite companies. And, and companies that not a lot of people actually hold in their already existing exposure. So another thing that was important was not just did we want to bring out uh, the Procure Space ETF to be the first pure play space ETF, but we also wanted to really capture what the what the broader space yeah. industry looks like. And most people don't have that exposure currently, yeah. so we provided something really new for investors. Marianne, is this all a little too spaced out and too general, uh, well, too, too specific infinity, rather for you? infinity and beyond. Um, <laughs> but with that, we actually do have a forecast for, for space and we've estimated that the market by 2045 can actually be close to three trillion dollars so wow. based on the numbers that you've talked about we see tremendous amount of growth um, that's that's in this like area. eight times what we're that's talking exactly. 384 is what we put up here that's yes three and trillion eight times our exact number is 2.7 trillion by 2045 nice and you think what is going to drive that that growth obviously it's going to be more than satellites going on here. well it's digital and and i think this is what the world is underestimating is the power of digital, the power of 5G, and the growth in all the markets, whether it's cloud computing, whether yeah. it's semiconductors. I mean, we have short-term hiccups here in the marketplace, but the long-term prospects for the growth in digital um, yeah. is quite large. Now, Andrew, I see satellites on here. The obvious things I don't see, for example, I have a question mark here, Boeing, Airbus, Lockheed, are, are they in the fund? Aren't they sort of related they, to space somehow? They are. But however, they're considered diversified companies. So if you look at the fund, it was very important that 80% at least of the weight was focused on these pure place companies driving more than 50% of their revenues. If you look at some of those more industrial defense names, aerospace names that people are familiar with, because it's not a pure play, they fit into this 20% diversified tranche. So you are getting Exposure to these companies Just that are huge amounts. players, but because you don't necessarily want a fund that's going to be guided by these companies that aren't necessarily deriving their their revenues from this theme, that's why they have this. And you this started trash. trading when just a few months ago, right? This fund just launched in April. Yeah, so it's, there's not a lot of time to see the, the, the track record, but we know your argument is very compelling. I mean, if you could connect the magic words, Internet of Things, 
along with the other issues that are there, of course, uh, what we were talking about, uh, the other tech issues uh, with satellites, uh, you're going to get the tech people buying in, the radical tech people. We certainly hope so. And there are some other mega trends that are actually occurring. So some of these things like uh, uh, reusable rockets are lowering the cost for individuals to actually launch items into space. They're looking at smaller satellites. So you can actually put more satellites into space at a lesser cost. The sensors on them are even more powerful than they ever were before. So there's a lot of driving, not just from the commercial side, but also from the government side um, and some of these broader projects like us building a, a permanent base on the moon possibly in the future. Internet of Things, 5G, cloud computing, connected with satellites. Got it all. I love it. We, we're wrapping all the high tech stuff, all us geeks. Love that kind of stuff. Thanks very much for joining us. I really enjoyed listening to it.